this is a temporary measure in order to be able to make my measurement because this is actually the second story the, the uh, top three the purlin so that piece that I cut last time sits here so this is just a kind of a block that's the same size to make a measurement with put this bit on here in order to make a laser measurement I'm going to start constructing these uh, roof joists. I need to do a bit of mathematics. I need to do a bit of uh, to get my right to get the right uh, roof pitch. Really, this is the practical reality of building on the building site. The the drawings had one fig figure a me measurement, but the reality of when the ground foundation was made, there's a, a little bit of error, and. The wooden building sits on top of that in the most ideal position possible. Um, it also takes consideration of the old building and where I want to um, have the beams that, that uh, connect the two buildings together. There's kind of uh, very technical details, they're not important really. The fact is, in reality you have to check and see exactly what size the building really is and not just use the mathematics that are on the drawings. Although they're pretty, they would try, you know, I tried very hard to get those as accurate as possible but the reality is slightly different. So the real width of the building is 646.6 .6 metres and uh, no, 640, 6 metres, 46 centimetres and 6 millimetres. Uh, I divide that by 4, that gives me the height of, the, of that triangle uh, which actually again is a kind of, it's an idealised, it's not the real size of the uh, the joists because that's measured from the very outside edge of the building and in fact the reality is the joists sit on the building something like that with this bit cut out so it's that point there so I need to find out exactly how that's going to be cut out so that I can work out the mathematics of what height uh, my fourth which is 161.65 uh, will be in the very centre of the building which decides exactly how all of these bits are going to look. So it's, it perhaps sounds a little bit complicated, it is a bit complicated. Uh, and actually doing it in theory complicates it perhaps even more than it needs to be because when you're building like this practically it you find out what the correct amount is and uh, because you can just do it and see it and check it and double check it and measure it so now I'm going to put I found my very centre of the building which is we mark as CC and uh, at that point I'm going to screw on a piece of wood vertically and screw that on there like that Try and keep it uh, so that it's in uh, plumb, and then uh, I'll mark on the, the correct height, 61 point whatever it was, and, uh, and then I'll put a blue string up to have a little look at it and see if it looks right, and then I can make any adjustments I want. I haven't actually ordered the parts for the actual wooden roof yet, so uh, this is quite important information to be able to order those parts. Um, bear in mind this is the top part but I've actually have screwed it to the bottom in several places so it, 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 it's, it was not going to move. I just need to get my spirit level. Let's have a look at the picture. I've got no problems relying on a, the spirit level is uh, that one and uh, the spirit levels are very accurate. 
also using a set square in a corner or the timber square, the larger one, incredibly accurate. I mean, they really, they do uh, expose the tiniest errors. So these practical, physical tools that people have used for centuries um, really take a lot of the guesswork out of building. So you need checks and balances at every stage. That is, that is quite level. I wasn't really expecting that to work that way. I probably could do with being triangulated, but we tried like that. All right, I'm going to set up the blue bit. I'll film again when that's finished. Now. Oh, that's a lovely pitch. I've just bolted on the, <coughs> my set square here because I'm going to take a laser reading now from the top because I want very much to practically measure the distance of this line in space. So I'll do this, do it here and you'll see that on camera and I'm not going to show you the other end, which I'm also going to do. I want to check them and see that they're both the same. The irony is, is the, the string is in the way. She don't really need the string. It's called Fyrungsröst in Norwegian. It's probably, at least I've been taught, that it's uh, probably the most ideal angle for, to have a roof because it's exactly halfway between the push of the wind and the pull of it. And the lower angle of the, w the roof and the wind will start to lift the roof. And if it's a steeper angle, the wind will push down on it. So it's very traditional all over the world especially in coastal areas and, I, and whether they found out that just by copying houses that didn't get destroyed in storms I don't know I don't think it's done in theory so anyway that point there is uh, the point that I measured my one my uh, my height you know the exact uh, mathematical point uh, and I found out that by actually at the other end. Now I've, I've done the cut, the Sarlingshuk, as it's called in Norwegian, 
at 10 centimeters. I did think about doing it at 15, which is the the width of the materials I'm using, which means that it would be completely stable. But if I did that at that height, I think it would be too little. Uh, eight and a half centimeters. It's too little across the top. Um, and there's quite a long tarkud stick, which is uh, the, the bit of the, the roof that sticks out over the edge of the wall. It's quite big in, in these Norwegian houses to keep them dry and everything. It's uh, traditional. So uh, I felt that, that was, that's too little because it has a lot of pressure on it. It would be stretch, stretch forces, in fact, because of the momentum of the outside edge pulling down on it. So I'm going to go for 10, which means that the timber stops five centimetres short, which brings me to that point there, 4.6 I think it was, 4.6. Yeah, so that is the outside edge of the building. And uh, I just go 4.6 in at the other end, as I showed you before, that one, 4.6 in, and that's the point of intersection. So that vertical, that should be a vertical line when it's set up. The board also curves that way. Obviously, so the weight when when the weight goes on it, it's stronger. So, which is to do with the way the tree grows. Also, something to do with the where it's cut from the piece of piece of wood. I mean, it, obviously, the centre growth is always different. And in production timber that's come from forestry, there's a great deal of difference between the youthful timber and uh, nowadays than there would have been in the past because in the old days everything was grown in the shade which made the interior timber soft and pliable and the exterior hard and stiff whereas now it's grown in light because of the clear cutting practices and uh, so the exterior and the interior timber is all the, the anatomy of the wood is all stiff like uh, adult wood it's one of the reasons why we have big problems with modern solid buildings I'm going to move the screw down. I'm going to move the screw down 5.2. A bit lower. That's about 5.3, that's now. Quite heavy, really, that stuff. Let's see if the maths worked. as expected that's good so it, it worked perfectly I'm very happy about that so theory and practice are married so that that point where it reaches that vertical on the left hand side there 
is exactly the centre of the house. Uh, so if I cut, um, if I cut that wood there, well, there are two ways of doing it. Either I can, well, there are loads of ways of doing it. I haven't decided which way to do it yet, so I'm not going to cut it that at that end yet. I need to think about it a bit more. So I can't do that on camera. So let's see. Uh, back to autofocus. Are we recording? Still recording. Right. The. Um, okay. That's the Sarling's Huck. I don't know what it's called in English, but that, that's, I think that looks really good. I'm very happy with that. Um, now I can make the rest of the vertical, the vertical parts. So, so this one can be my template, you see. I, I can, uh, can make more exactly the same as that. Uh, this is the reason why I've had this, uh, my, what might seem to be an excessive uh, attention to the exact detail of the lengths of everything, but that's because with triangulation you just have no, there's absolutely no margin of error. Three millimetres wrong is completely wrong. I mean it just won't, it won't work properly. Uh, and here I have a, a one building roof going into another building's roof and that makes it even more critical that everything is really very good, otherwise I'm going to have big problems later they kind of uh, accumulate the problems if you if you don't sort them out All right half half of the material I'm using to make the roof construction out of so you see my key becomes more complicated that's very good that's half of this material That's a mistake, isn't it? Ooh. Otherwise that's looking pretty good. Bit thick at the bottom. Wouldn't want it any other way, really, because if it was, you know, I purposefully don't put the saw completely vertically because you know, I've got, I'd have nothing to.
further than with a chisel. I haven't got chisel out yet today. Okay, that's good. 